In this class, we're going to cover the, my favorite position in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the triangle choke. So we're going to start with a basic triangle from the guard. We're going to teach you how to escape the triangle with posture, and we're going to teach you how to escape the triangle when it's really sunk in and almost finished. So let's start with the triangle from the guard. When I execute the triangle from the guard, the first thing that I need to decide is what setup to use. Normally, we teach beginners the very basic setup. So we get them to transition from closed guard to what I call the mixed martial arts guard, right here. Then I'm going to teach my student to place one foot on one biceps and to move the other arm in like this. This is what I call the archer stance because it looks like his, you know, ready to fire an arrow right there. Now when it gets to this position, all I got to do is slide his foot up and I'm going to cause the a situation here where one arm is outside my guard, one arm is inside my guard. And that's where I want to be when it comes to triangles. After this happens here, the next step is crucial and most likely what makes my triangle be different from what most people teach. Uh, the majority of jiu-jitsu schools will teach you to close like this, staying in line with your opponent and pulling the head to finish. With this, the problem with this is not only it's harder to close the triangle on people that are slightly bigger, but it's also harder on your neck. If he drives forward and starts bringing pressure, and most people will when getting triangle, you're going to hurt your neck pretty easily. I also need to rely on both hands here to apply pressure on my triangle, which means they're not going to be able to attack anything else. The alternative to this is what I do. I, after I free that foot right there, I'm going to come down and chop against the back of the neck. So my right leg chops down just like a guillotine. It's going to come down like a blade. And I'm going to bring my opponent down with it. At the same time, I'm moving my head to the side, keeping my back flat on the mat. It's very important to keep your back flat on the mat, otherwise you're going to lose a lot of power. While I do this, I also control the inside arm and you can use any grip that you're comfortable with and I'm going to bring this arm to this side so that his right arm will, especially the right elbow, will rest right on top of my hip bone. So let's take a look at this here. From here, I'm going to move, chop. You can see that I'm now perpendicular to my opponent. The triangle choke consists of two bars and his head trapped between those two bars. One bar is my calf coming on top and it comes down like I said, with energy here, I don't want this to be a lazy movement. And the other bar is his arm, which I crossed over right before I clamp down. It's important to cross over before you clamp down. If I cross over before I clamp down, you can see that his chin is in the front of his arm. If I reverse the order, this will happen. It's nowhere near as effective. So this makes for a very deep triangle. Now, the second leg will come into play. Let's understand this. The second leg is not part of the choke. It's a safety catch here. So if I do this here, the choke is already taking place. He's already being slowly choked there. This only adds speed to the process and safety to the process. It's very important, yet it's not mandatory. Sometimes I'll close a triangle with my arm taking a second place. Once I get this, how should I crank the triangle? As the name implies, the triangle choke is named by this here. It's a triangular gap where I'm trapping his head and arm. Now, the way that I want to do this is that I want to narrow this gap so he gets choked. So there will be two components to this. I'm going to squeeze my thighs together so I'm narrowing that V. And I will also bring my heel down so I can lower my calf, thus making this triangle smaller and smaller. So the thighs will come in and the heel will come down which brings the calf down. So we're doing this here. So I close, my top leg will be positioned in a way that my right foot is right behind my left knee and I apply the pressure to get the choke. You can see that I didn't need to pull hard on his head or anything of the sort which means that my hands are free to do other things. I can be attacking a triangle, cranking hard on it, while at the same time attacking an inverted arm bar, an arm bar inside, an Americana inside, a Kimura outside, 
and all sorts of things. So very important. Let's see that once again. So I control right here. Let's start from close guard and see that transition. Control the wrist. Bring him to MMA guard. Place one foot on the biceps. Extend that leg. Pull the other arm in. Slip that foot out of the way. Chop down while moving sideways. And make sure you're crossing the arm there. The more you cross, the better. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring the second leg into play. Lower my heel down towards the ground. And get the tap. 